Was uh, was it me or were we too loud and shouty and fake and forced YouTube in that in that first bit? I feel like the coffee is you, you know making to, me. Do you want to go from the start of the sale again? Well, you know, maybe just 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 no, just, fine, just try a little bit more chilled out. We can go from the start of the sale again. That's fine. And be a little more we chilled can out. Do what you need. To, you feel like you need to do that. Do whatever. We can do okay. That. What up YouTube, it's your gal Al. My name's Rich, and we're here to present The Weekend Escape, a show about everything we've learned in this last week. Yep, for instance, I've learned that a spoonful of sugar helps medicine go down. The song doesn't specify a size though, so I've gone with a tablespoon. But you can use whatever you've got at home. God forbid we ever do a cooking show. But this one's about games, isn't it, Rich? That's right, PC games specifically. Shall we have a look at what we've learned there? Uh, but Kieran was meant to bring me a spoon for the for the spoonful of maybe, maybe you demonstration. Can, maybe you can do that later, okay? Um, okay. Much, much later. Good news, Alice. Rare has scrapped plans to charge you gold for dying in Sea of Thieves. Oh, thanks. It's steady. Oh, what? Why? <sighs> it's just that Microsoft are also planning a clamp down on offensive language, so be careful. How offensive are we talking? Well, no one's exactly sure just yet, oh. but they are bringing in new terms of service to Skype and some of their other services in May. There was some concern at one point that they were going to do the same for Xbox Live, but that seems to have been rolled back. Either way, they claim the right to go back through your data if they have reason to investigate. So none of that foul mouth, okay? We don't want the eyes of Satya Nadella on us. All right, Dad. What did you say? I said, all right, dang. Hey, even that might be pushing it. Uh, you were talking about sea thieves? That's right. The plan originally was to attach a gold cost to death, since the penalty for popping your pirate clogs isn't very harsh right now. That's part of what's nice about Sea of Thieves though, right? You can go on a risky adventure and not worry too much about the consequences. Indeed, and it seems like Reddit agrees with you. Rare say they've heard the sentiment there and decided to send the feature to Davy Jones' locker. Well, that's no good. Where's that? It's, um, it's not an in-game location. It's a euphemism. For what? It's a euphemism for drowning and resting at the bottom of the ocean forever. Wow, well I don't think it's my language you need to be watching out for. It's just a fun pirate phrase. Alright, well I'm going to save the show by switching the subject to Far Cry 5. Sure, it's out now, right? Yeah, it's out and you can be done with it in 10 minutes. 10 minutes? That, uh, that doesn't sound right. It's true, you can opt out of fighting the Eden's Gate cult entirely. You've been missing out on quite a lot, but it's still a valid ending. Yeah, that's not going to work for me. I've got plans for the open world. Like? Well, fishing mainly. Gosh, you really are the show's dad. Here are five ways Far Cry has changed the open world. In the beginning, Far Cry was developed by Crytek. Yep, that's where we got the name, and nope, it never made sense. Even before this was an open world series, the studio were experimenting with outdoor levels on a scale rarely seen in shooters at the time. Thing is, they were also interested in stealth, and for stealth, you need stuff to hide behind. The answer was PC gaming's first convincing vegetation. Trees, tall grasses, and plenty of bushes. When TLC sang, I don't want no scrub, they'd obviously never had to sneak up behind a mercenary over open ground. We've been doing the same ever since. For the sequel, Far Cry took its long grass to Central Africa, where it suddenly became really dangerous. Seriously, grass is a killer. The ability to spread fire added an extra dimension to open world combat. It allowed you to treat your environment as a tool rather than just something to trample over on the way to your next objective. There was a lot to think about too. Far Cry 2's fire accounted for the direction and speed of the wind, as well as rain and how moist the plants were. Admittedly, the uh, concept of moistness hasn't really been picked up by the open world genre at large. Shame. Before Far Cry 3, open worlds often felt disconnected from the missions hosted within them. You would play a linear chunk of story before getting returned to a map that was more or less unrelated to that narrative. By perfecting the outpost, Far Cry gave us puzzle boxes that could be approached from any angle. And in Far Cry 3, base capture provided clear progression as you cut a swath across the Rook Islands. Without outpost capture, there'd be no sense that you were changing things at all. Isn't that why we spent all that time blind firing out of jeeps? To change the world? You might say that GTA 5 is the best open world game ever made, but what's your favourite vehicle in GTA? Eh? If you can't say Elephant, then Far Cry 4 will always come out on top. Outposts brought tactics to the open world, but Elephants smashed through the gate, flipped the cars and knocked your enemies flying. Uh, hang on, that's not really a metaphor, is it? That's just very literally what happens. Still, that's what's magical about the Elephants. Going out into a living world and bringing a part of it back to meet civilization, And not as part of a crafted ammo bag for once. Aww. 
You might have heard developers say their worlds are like characters. It was Far Cry 3, though, that put a face on its world. Vast was a masterstroke, not just an electric presence in cutscenes, but a personal reason for cutting back the pirates on the Rook Islands. Every captured outpost was a slight against Vast himself, and a way to get revenge. After Vast came Pagan Min, a constant voice on the other end of the phone that chastised and congratulated you for your progress. And in Far Cry 5, we have Joseph Seed, the gun-toting pastor. It's becoming difficult to imagine a game like this without an outlandish villain. I think I'd get lonely, you know. Everyone deserves a nemesis. And now it's time for the part of the show where we, which is to say Alice and I, tell you, the people, about some good bargains on Steam. Love a good barg. <laughs> oh, I said the word barg again, didn't I? Yeah, it's not the best word, is it? If we're honest, not as good as, you know, actual words. No, but your reaction is really funny. Anyway, up first is a great barg. It's Grand Theft Auto V, which is 50% off until the 1st of April. April Fools? No, April Reelsies. Also not a word. Anyway, that's not long, is it? Only gives you until Sunday. Yep, so make sure you pick it up with your grubby chocolate covered hands. Is that more youth speak? No, Rich, it's Easter weekend, which means people are going to be eating chocolate eggs and getting their hands on their seat. Yeah, and never mind. Okay, cool. I'm going to tell the people about GTA V. Please, take it away. Well, it's a massive open world action game that is both single player and now multiplayer. The main single player campaign lets you play as three unlikely friends, Trevor, Michael and Franklin. Young street hustler, the retired bank robber and the terrifying psychopath. Well, quite. Grand Theft Auto Online is the multiplayer and it's often being updated with lots of new brutal heists and a multitude of fun but brutal games that you can play with friends. Nice, love a good bit of team deathmatch, all being run over through a car wash as you try and get your vehicle back. I feel like there's... I'm, I'm picking up on some feelings of unexpressed anger here. Look, Rich, I'm not talking to you about this. You're not a professional. Hey, I'm highly professional. It does. It could be It could be argued that it's worse, actually, because if you're the whole shit, then at least you are in, you know, your entirety, the whole shit. You are sort of, sort of self-defined in that sense. If you are a piece of shit, then you're not even... You don't even have that sort of agency. You don't even have that worth, right? You are just like a piece of a larger shit. You're that insignificant. I didn't mean that, but now you mention it, yeah, you're not professional at all. Mean. Moving on. Insurgency is also on sale until the 1st of April with a hefty 75% off. It's nice. It's another one of those FPS things, isn't it? It's quite a popular genre, Alice. Genre? I thought it said for frames per second. Alice, we all know you write this section. Stop trying to trick me into mansplaining. Haha, <laughs> but it nearly, nearly yeah. happened. So, didn't Insurgency it? is a tactical multiplayer FPS where you and a team have to secure strongholds and destroy enemy supplies in order to succeed. Sounds fun. It does. It also features over 40 weapons, 16 maps, and 7 multiplayer modes. There are 5 co-op modes too. A game you can play with friends, nice! Yeah, which I guess you can't get involved in, you know, because... I have no friends. Oh. Yeah, come yeah. on Rich, I write this stuff. Finally comes Shadow Tactics, Blaze of the Shogun, which is on sale with 33% off until April the 9th. So, there's a bit more time for you to grab this one. I know, this one does look like a fun game. Yeah, it's a nifty little tactical stealth game. Wait, nifty? Yep, Nif which is set in Japan around the nifty. Edo period. You take control of a team of deadly specialists and you have to sneak in the shadows between your enemies, infiltrate castles, mountain monasteries or hidden forest camps. You can set traps, poison your enemies or completely avoid human contact. I mean enemy contact. You mean enemy contact? I mean enemy contact. Are you sure you don't want to talk about stuff? Completely sure. Everything is fine. Okay, well, I know it'll cheer you up. If it's patch notes, you're wrong. It's patch notes! This is the part of the show where we tell you what's going on in two games that have just received updates. Yay. You like this bit, don't you? Um. Because you like, you like the fact that it annoys me because we cram it into these yeah. silly 10 second formats. I think it's a great way to, you know, receive patch notes. Okay, cool. But you don't. Well. Because you're old. No, I, I would I would go into more detail and, and read them from you in a anyway, dry and monotonous Rich, voice. But Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Are Six you Siege. ready? Important to point out, actually, yes. that this is a technical test server update and not a patch that's going out to the live game. So some of this may change, but equally, some of it may come live soon. This is why so. we keep it brief, because this. Three, two, one, go. So Lion's Scan is less powerful. Uh, he has one less charge of it. The cooldown between those charges has been doubled from 10 seconds to 20, and there's less predictable recoil. Nice! Nailed it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, almost suspicious because the auto queue is up. Uh, but like, you know, let's 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 stop. Kid ourselves, you're going to um, conjure a suspiciously detailed set of patch notes now for Sea of Thieves. Am I? Which just received its uh, first update since launch last week. Yeah. In three, two, one, go. Oh, look. Pirates no longer lose their scars. Buried chests are now always possible to dig up. Snakes behave correctly. Fix the tinnitus sound so it doesn't go on after death. And no more invisible kraken tentacles. 
done with a second and a half to spare. Nice. I'm just so professional at this now. What shampoo do you use where patch notes appear in your hair? Well, I can't tell you, otherwise you'll start cheating too. Imagine that. It'd ruin the whole show, wouldn't it? Yep. Fan me! Oh, no! What? Why? Why not? How come I never get the good Rich, stuff? Rich, our comments are literally full of people giving compliments. What more could you want? For them to be read out on this show. Well, tough. You're just going to have to deal with the ones I've picked out. As always. Yes, as always. You're learning. From last week's episode, KCA asks, if you guys could bring one console exclusive from any generation to PC with all the PC bells and whistles, what would you pick? Good question, and for me, a tough choice between Bloodborne, Demon's Souls, or Halo's Master Chief Collection, ideally with a shiny remaster. I'd probably go for the MCC out of those, just because of how much better it would get with a PC remaster, whereas there's less to improve in the other cases, I feel. And for me, probably something like Star Fox Adventures, just because I was so in love with that game when I used to play it on my Nintendo GameCube. There were dinosaurs, foxes, spaceships, and floating jellyfish. What more could you possibly want? Of all the games on all the consoles in all the world, you choose Star Fox Adventures on GameCube. Please don't be mean. I'm not being mean, no judgement, there's no... It's a fine choice. There's that judgement peeping through. Sorry, you can't help it. On the same episode, Venoso the producer says, Don't got friends to play these games, hashtag forever alone. Incredibly sorry to hear that, Venoso. Rich doesn't either, he only has colleagues. Hey, I have friends. I consider all of the people, you guys, as friends. But not the people you work with. Noted. That's not what I meant. Too late now, Rich Brew. Richie Root. Yeah. And finally, oh. on last week's hardware episode, Adam I says, I actually love this channel. Most of the content you guys post always has me interested and is presented very nicely. What a what a lovely comment. Was I in that video? No, no, Rich. Do you not ever remember what videos you're in? I have a burning need to be in every video this channel produces. Oh, that's a bit weird. It's not weird, all right? It, Alice, it okay? Is. I just want to be loved by the people. I just want to be loved. It's, ugh, what a diva. He'll be back. I won't. Guess I'll have to close the show on my own then. Okay, first up, it's time to congratulate the winner of last week's Overwatch goodie bag, Andrew Rains. Sorry, Andrew, you normally get a round of applause from my co-host about now, but uh, Rich isn't here. Of course, there's more to be won. This week, we're giving away... Oh, what are we giving away? Gosh, if only there was somebody here to remind me. Someone with the organized mind of a parent. This week, we're giving away a Wargaming hoodie and backpack. You can click the link below today's video for details on how to apply. And if you visit the site, you'll also see that we're giving away DLC for the mercenary tactics game War Banners. Honestly, this show would fall apart without me. Every show needs it, Dad. I'm not. Yeah, okay. I'll take it. Bye, everyone. Bye.